I hire Atalon the Silent and Zim Coalbiter, then they both die. Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord has been in early access since March 2020. It combines strategy and role-playing action in a medieval setting, giving you clan and kingdom management, real-time army tactics, and a first or third person role-playing experience all at once. This blend of styles gives Bannerlord a large sense of scale. Since you start the campaign controlling one character, so just yourself, you travel the world to recruit soldiers and other followers, and you slowly grow your clan or kingdom to control Kalradia. There's a definite sense of accomplishment to go from being knocked out and captured by a handful of bandits, to fielding a standing army with allied clans and hundreds or even thousands of soldiers to invade large towns and castles. But what if you wanted to play Bannerlord as a more traditional RPG experience? What if you only hire named party companions and none of the nameless fighting units? Can you still conquer your own castle without using save reload tricks or other exploits? Well, that's what I'm going to show you. This video is a Party of Heroes Bannerlord campaign. I do have some rules. My own party will only go into battle with named heroes. I will briefly hire recruits when needed to trigger the family rescue quest. That quest requires my party to have 20 units. And I will do no save reloading. So how will my clan be able to conquer anything? Well, I will let some of my heroes form their own parties for the clan, so they will recruit forces that we can then summon for our conquest. Of course, this will still be challenging because any new party will only have one hero to start. In order to enable the creation of additional parties, we also need to join a kingdom. This playstyle has interesting freedoms and limitations. Many quest types will be excluded because my party will be too small to accept them. I will be susceptible on the battlefield, because I can be easily outnumbered, but I'll be able to maintain a high party speed with relatively low wages and almost negligible food demands, that is, until we create new parties for the clan. So, let's get started with a new campaign. My party will be companions on horses for basically the entire campaign, so I choose the Kuzate culture for the cavalry speed bonus. I make a tall character to maximize attacking reach, though that also makes me a bigger target. Face details don't really matter. You hardly see yourself anyway. I'll go with the reverse mustache just to make the portrait stick out a bit. I focus my starting skill levels on riding, archery, and medicine. I need to pick a name for myself, something suitable for someone spending a lot of time traveling alone. I will be Solo Man. Solo Man. I'm looking for a challenge here, so all the difficulty settings are set to realistic, and combat AI difficulty is veteran. That's the middle level. I leave birth and death enabled. This probably won't matter too probably much. Probably won't matter too much. Won't matter too much. And I keep the ability to assign clan member perks. And here we go. I skip the tutorial and go right to clan creation. I want a nice representative clan name, the Lone Warriors. Next, I spend 20 minutes picking out a clan banner. This is obviously very important. Let's pick this infinity looking symbol to make our enemies think that we're an endless army. White on black will help my small party stick out really well, though once we join a kingdom, the colors will change. Right away, I pick up an extra horse to help carry stuff and then make my way to Poros. Ah, there's a tournament here. I have to grind tournaments for money, gear, and renown, even more than in a normal campaign. With a small party, I'm going to be really limited in the kinds of quests that I can accept, so tournament renown will be really helpful. And I'm dead, and lose most of my money on bets. Okay, so before I lose any more money, I'm going to hire a follower. I don't normally focus on companions that are just straight fighters, but here I'm going to need them. We only have one option, so Hecaron, you're hired. But I can't afford him. Instead, I upgrade my gear with the spear and shield, so I might have a better chance against looters. Alright, here we go. First fight against eight looters. I try and avoid all of their rocks before I get up close with my spear. Oh dear, almost dead. Time to get back a bit. And phew, they're starting to run off. See, that wasn't so bad, was it? I hunt the last few down, grab the loot, and drag my party of zero units, because I'm on low health, back to Poros. Can I take a quest? Nope, need a bigger party. Poros is also an expensive city, so not a good place to stock up on trade goods. Back to hunting looters. Here's a nice bridge position. I've been taking a lot of damage, so maybe a healer would make a great companion. I ride to Jalmaris and pick up Avagos the healer. Avagos, by the way, he's going to be the real survivor of this story. 
Avagos needs gear, but I'm nearly broke, so I grind a few practice fights. I don't get very far with an aggressive stance, so I perfect the strategy of hiding bravely in a corner while the other fighters kill each other. This doesn't always work, but I survive long enough to win a few rounds, including a match with the last two opponents kill each other for me. With my newfound riches, I ride out against more looters and get promptly beaten and captured by a party of four. The two surviving ones drag me around until I escape to Rote to win the tournament there with a fine showing of skills. Our renown has climbed to 25, so we're halfway to a tier 1 clan. Avagos is still captured, so I hunt down those two looters to free him. Losing to these two guys again would have been quite demoralizing. I upgrade my horse healing skills and finally find Avagos and make sure that he gets a horse too. Keeping him on foot was not a good idea. I also take an armor upgrade and we ride out together to take on more looters. I'm still taking a lot of damage, but we scrape through a couple more fights with town healing in between. Maybe we can pick up a brigand help quest. No, no we can't. I'm also going to need to rely on trading until I can afford to automate my economy with workshops and caravans. I get a close tournament win in Diathema. We take our load of wool to help a merchant in Saniopa, and we encounter some looters who seem to be crazed butter addicts with a lack of direction in their lives. I put the butter junkies out of their misery. We unload the wool, but get a criminal rating for doing so. <sighs> Try to help people. I swear an oath to not engage in any further such deeds, and am promptly tested for my piety with a hammer to the legs. Avagos flees, that coward, and loses the follow-up simulated fight, so we're back to being prisoners. Once I escape and heal up in Mysia, I learn that Avagos is all the way back in Diathema. He hasn't been much help so far, so I turn my attention east towards the Kuzates, home of the Horse Lords, and my cultural homeland. I find a better healer, Fiasin, though I can't afford her right away. I join another tournament to make money. Kuzay tournaments suit me well with my riding and growing polearm skills, and I gamble my way to victory with plenty of winnings to hire Fiasin. I try to avoid big looter parties while flipping trade goods. Hey, can I take this bounty hunter quest? No, my party is still too small. I am able to do the tool shopping quests. Hooray? In between more bandit fights, I find Ifar the Wanderer, who has great leadership and tactics, so would make an excellent party leader once her clan progresses high enough. I decide to not hire her right away, but she follows us back to Mysia, so I take this as a sign and bring her on board. Even though I can't create any new parties yet, she still makes an excellent scout to make use of right away. By this time my polearm skills are getting pretty good, and I take the perk to knock back opponents. We start taking on bigger parties of looters, with some success. My riding and archery skills are also improving and I take advantage of extra carrying capacity to start holding more trade goods. Speaking of extra weight, we finally make it back to Diathma. We haven't seen Avagos since he abandoned us in battle, so I promptly strip him of the gear I bought him and kick him out of the clan. That'll show him. With our clan of three, we have enough capacity to start more serious loading up on goods and selling elsewhere for profit. This brings up our trade skill and lowers our future trade penalties. I sign up for more Kuzate tournaments to grind Renown. We lose some, we win some. I chase down a party of five and for some reason are joined by a Kuzate army of 461. What the? Get out of the way! There is way too much celebrating here for five looters. At least I get 18% of the loot. That's less than one looter's worth. I shouldn't complain though. A second step bandit party jumped into another battle and with tougher units. With very low health I barely grabbed victory in a one versus one but Ifar was killed. I manage to grab her stuff from the looting screen and then start looking for another leader to replace her. I learn about Munim the Golden and head to Baltak Hand to go look for him. Along the way I find out that my party of two is still big enough to do a caravan ambush quest. Keeping up with the caravan is no problem, but I fall off my horse and get knocked out in battle. My current leader Fiasin ends up way back in Mysia, though in Chaik Hand I discover and hire Samir Frostbeard as a scout. I load him up as a horse archer and then we eventually track down and hire Munim the Golden in Makheb. I find out that there's a tournament in town and sign up to see some amazing horse physics. I win a lance in the tournament, which I use to help load up Munim. We make our way to Mysia to pick Fiasin back up. There's a tournament here too and I earn some sweet mittens. They're way nicer than the tattered arm wraps that I've had the whole time. Maybe that's why I keep getting captured. Now that we've reached a huge party size of four, 
I stop trying to earn money for equipment and focus on saving to invest in my economy. We're still mostly limited to hunting bandit units and buying selling goods. I'm just going to show hunting clips right now because those are more exciting than the trade window. I have enough distracting units that I can start taking on larger step bandit groups, even though I'm often the only one recording any kills. I get perhaps a bit too brave and try taking a step bandit hideout with my party of four. We fight our way through but suffer heavy losses and I'm the only one left to duel the leader. Fortunately I just scrape by, so the spoils are ours. While seriously injured, we barely make it to a castle while being chased by bandits, and fortunately they allow us inside. After we heal up, we find and hire another good party leader candidate in Akalat, named Rua the Wanderer. We finally have a party big enough to take a brigand hunting quest, giving us another way to earn money. We happily continue bandit hunting, but then we almost bite off more than we could chew, when taking on 15 step bandits. We manage a very close victory and we limp into Asurai territory to recover. To create a second party for our clan, we need to be tier two, which is 150 renown. With the quest limitations, we are basically left with tournament grinding and bandit hunting to earn renown, but at least these are also good for our pockets. Well, unless we get captured by bandits again. At least we don't have any costs while we're dragged around the map as a prisoner. After I break out, I slowly pick up my party again in between more tournament wins. I keep bandit hunting, playing in tournaments, and the cycle continues. Hey, don't get back on that horse. Don't do it. Don't do it. Get down. I make another attempt at a caravan ambush quest, and this time we're more successful. I have a string of tournament wins, including a duel against Penton, the Northern Empire leader in his home base of Diathma. I even managed to take out a forced bandit camp without everyone else getting knocked out. The grinding pays off as our clan finally crawls into tier 2, and we finally get enough money for a workshop in Epicrotea. I start with a smithy, but the returns on it end up being very poor, so after a few more tournament wins, I convert it into the more reliable brewery. Things start looking up for the clan. What the? <sighs> Here we go again. Alright, time to check in on Avagos. Hey look, the deserter is still alive, and he's in a tournament, and he's as naked as we left. I travel Kalradia on a tournament grind and make my way to Asrai territory in the south when tragedy strikes. We decide to help a caravan ambush, but we get creamed. We manage to pull off a win, but both Fyason and Samir die on the battlefield. In mere seconds we lose both our healer and our scout. This is a devastating loss for our party. Oh, the times we had together. In Sanala, I hire Ospak the Fish as a new scout. He's apparently not that great because he doesn't keep us from getting captured again by bandits. We even lose Manim the Golden, so much for our party leader. Seeing a need for more muscle in my crew, I pick up Edwain the Red. For good measure, I hire an engineer too, Gisselchild the Wainwright. I also pick up a better scout, Bothane the Wanderer, and then leave Ospak the Fish naked in the winter. With this new crew, we roll across Kalradia, until I'm captured by bandits again. I finally get to rest in Phaikaon, and three bandits even taunt me with their two prisoners, my fellow comrades, just outside the gates. Ah! I finally heal up to exact my revenge and free Gizzle Child. I journey to recover everybody, only to get captured yet again while attacking a bandit camp. Okay, we need even more muscle, so I hire Mavia the Black. She helps us get captured yet again. I finally bring a world of hurt to the bandit camp, taking it with just three of us. We still should have a healer though, and I find Magna Willowbark. Only now I've been hiring too many people. Mavia draws the short straw and is kicked out to fend for herself once we find her. I could kick her out from the clan screen, but I want my stuff back first. Before I find Magna again, I come across our good friend Avagos. Hey Avagos! He has clothes now, and also his healing seemed to have improved a lot, so well welcome back. Let's set up our clan roles properly. Just in time for Bathang to get killed when I'm captured by forest bandits. Okay, so I have an exciting opportunity available for a new scout. Maravich of the Hills, you have a scouting skill of 120, so you are hired. All this time as a prisoner, and I'm somehow still earning money. I suppose the brewery is helping, plus the tournament grind. I buy another brewery, but maybe my party's getting too much free booze because Gizzlechild the Engineer got herself killed while we defeated Sea Raiders. Avagos, where were you on that one? Okay, here is Hasid the Scholar, 120 Surgeon skill. So, you guessed it. Adios, Avagos. Okay, so by this point, my party really needs a boost. I haven't hired a single unnamed unit yet, but I really want to add my family members, 
so we get our party size to 20 to trigger the family rescue quest. All this time in my leadership level is still only one. Radagos finds us to give the quest, and I then immediately unload the recruits. This is the party of heroes, remember? We're not going to take the cannon fodder for the family rescue. We tear through the mountain bandit camp to reach Galter. I duel him, and we win my family. What's my brother's name here? Right, Nusun. It's always end names here. The brother character is always very high level, and I load him out accordingly. Oh, get ready for the pain. I apparently bought another brewery in the dark corners of Ostrom. I can't even see the contract to sign. With my growing collection of breweries and increasing tournament renown, it's time to expand the clan. We give Nusun his own party, and of course no other people, because we don't have any other units we can give him. Don't worry, he can find his own troops. However, we can't get his party to join ours, unless we're in a kingdom. So we find Garios, the leader of the Western Empire, and sign up as a vassal. There's word of declaring war on the Northern Empire, so I sell the brewery in Epicrotea to avoid losing it outright. We do some single party raiding, but this quickly gets us into trouble, and we need to bribe our way out to safety. Not all armies are created equal though, and apparently the Hidden Hand clan sucks. We wipe out a party of 36 units with just the four of us, not one wounded member, and we pick up Ukor as a prisoner. By this time our sister Alti is eligible to join us, so we pick her up and rotate, and make sure she has some gear. She's a low level character though, so I need to be sure to protect her, even from single brave looters. At least we don't need to worry about the Hidden Hand. Hey, I'm behind you guys! Another fight against 41 without a single loss, and we get another prisoner to ransom. We then continue through a seemingly endless cycle of wars, companions, and being a prisoner. We helped the Western Empire to siege San Rufa, but failed to defend it from counterattack. I begin a new strategy where I follow a companion when they start a new party. I follow my brother Nusen while he raises his own force. I do the same with Ruwa, and then I create an army with my own clan. With my army, I try to siege Sestadame Castle, but we're whittled down and have to abandon the siege. We regroup and try again until a large army shows up to chase us away. In our third attempt, we join the Western Army and manage to win the siege and celebrate with our allies. I spend influence to claim the castle for myself. No, this doesn't count as winning a castle on my own, but it is eventually lost while we are away. In a later siege of Sestadame Castle with the Western Empire, I literally help break down the door and charge the defenses to victory. In a war against the Vlandians, we join a siege of Ortigia, where siege tower use is inefficient, but we still manage to overwhelm the defenders. Now over this period, I'm captured by the Northern Empire, Mountain Bandits, the Lake Rats, Euchre of the Hidden Hand actually catches me at a particularly weak point, the Northern Empire again, even more bandits, the Batanians, that was a long wait in Sionon, Forest Bandits, the Batanians again, the Northern Empire again, again. This time they throw me into Saniopa for 11 days. And forest bandits again. What happened to the companions? I leave birth and death enabled. This probably won't matter too much. Probably won't matter too much. Won't matter too much. Well, Edwain and Merovich die. I hire Atalon the Silent and Zim Coalbiter. Then they both die. I hire Risa the Spice Fender. And she actually survives long enough to run a caravan. I continued to fill out my roster with Laymanon the Scholar as Engineer, Sorgon the Alone as Scout, and Gulric the Loud as a Fighter and Party Leader. I lose Hasid the Scholar, so my Surgeon, Sorgon the Alone, and Ruwa the Wanderer, all in one battle. I find Magna Willowbark again and hire her as a new Surgeon. She can't keep my sister Alte alive. I hire Yidwin Cow Thief to be my new Scout, and he dies in his first battle. I hire Drusabalda as a Fighter, and I also pick up my brother Jatu. I lose Magna in a field battle, and I even forget to lose her stuff. The only replacement medic I can find is... Avagos. Again. Why is he so happy to see me? I also hire Sorok the Fatherless as a bowman. Maybe I need more bowmen to stay alive. They don't help keep my brother Jatu alive though, or Lamanon our engineer. At least the economy is doing well. We've been earning tributes in almost every peace treaty, so we have a nice buffer in the bank. Anyway, this is getting cyclical. I need more ways to recruit heroes to my party. I finally find a suitable lady who I can woo, and then settle the arrangements with a payment of only 5,200 gold. Hmm, not a bad deal. We spend our honeymoon by, you guessed it, being dragged around by mountain bandits. Eventually I get a son, so only 18 years to get another companion who can get killed. The next war is again against the Northern Empire. These Imperials do not like each other at all. 
This time we help in the siege of Epicrotea, one of the most prosperous towns. It is quite imposing to charge against, but I press on, kill the enemy trying to climb down our siege tower for some reason, get knocked out when jumping into a nest of archers, but still come away with the win. In all the warfare, my brother Newson got captured by mountain bandits, so I start slaying through camps to look for him. In the meantime, I also become the tournament leader. Okay, second bandit camp? Not here either. I come to mountain bandit camp number three, and finally free Newson. Okay, that's it. I can't wait for the kid to grow up. Time to push forward and finish this campaign. Ooh, over 800 damage. Anyway, I reassemble my clan army once more. My party is only four people, but with our clan mates, we have another 200. I should point out that we can keep this army together indefinitely because there is no influence cost to maintain cohesion. I follow my clan parties while they train up enough soldiers. This will help keep them from getting captured. With Nusun, my wife Asela, and Gulric the Loud, we have over 250 to lead a new siege of Sestadane Castle. This place keeps changing hands. Some enemies show up to defend on the field, and although I thought it would be close, we get captured and thrown into Sestadane Castle as prisoners. This is not how I wanted to be here. We eventually pick the family back up in Zionica and start to try again. I get assigned a castle that I didn't want from my kingdom allies, but I figure out how to give it back for reassignment within the kingdom. There, Mechalovia is Krotor's problem now. I have my own castle to take. I build the army back up piecemeal, creating one allied party at a time, and then following them until I hire them into my army. I don't want to get surprised again while sieging, so I hire a new scout. Actually, this is an old scout. Welcome back, Ospak the Fish. We also get a sailors party up and running again. I try to do some mass leveling, but we bring too many recruits and get crushed again by the Northern Empire. After the next peace treaty, I get enough time to rebuild the army with all four parties, including my party of six. The next war is against Sturgia, and I figure, well that's fine, they're stuck way up north. Only problem is, we now have to go up there to capture anything. We march to Mazadan Castle to lay siege. Quick, quick, build some siege machinery. But before we can assault, we get attacked, and I get knocked out and captured while trying to switch horses. Before I can pick up my heroes again, another war is declared against the Northern Empire. My surgeon is immediately captured in Diathma, so I try to sneak in at terrible odds. Eventually I get back to rebuilding my army in Batanian territory. I haven't been over here since I was a prisoner. Then I get a sudden surprise. I fail the main quest. Hmm, need to do it within 10 years. 10 years? This campaign has been going on for 10 years? I suppose I've spent half of it as a prisoner at this point. Okay, wrap it up, wrap it up. Finally, we find the perfect target, Corania Castle. It's a Northern Empire castle, but it's far from their usual territory and cut off from the rest of their kingdom. The Asari have taken all the territory that surrounds it. This gives me plenty of time to set up the siege with a ram and siege tower. Northern Empire reinforcements eventually show up, but it's too late. Time to march on. An entire army of the Lone Warrior Clan. Me with my own party of five. We wear down their defenses. Our siege tower gets to the wall without any problem. Our ram gets to the gate. The defenders are helpless. They don't even want to fight anymore. Let's go help at the gate. Oh, you can smell the fear on the other side. These Imperials know that hope is lost. We charge in and take out their small militia. That's it. I've finally taken a castle with my party of heroes. Let's join in the celebration. It's a happy day. The most of these guys look bored. They wanted to do more fighting. It's all right, folks. It's all right. After this, we need to actually be assigned the castle. We're still a vassal after all. Well, we already turned down one castle recently, so we're top priority for this one. We get Garios' seal of approval, and Karenia is ours. A just reward for the Lone Warriors. Let's review how we ended up. I managed to get my leadership skill up to 51, even though I didn't hit level 2 with soldiers in my own party. We have two living relatives and six companions. Hold on, did these numbers add up? Eight heroes, three of them with parties, so there should be five with me. We just made Reese the governor, so that's four companions with me. But my whole party is now only four. Who's missing? Avagos? What the hell were you doing in Amitatus the whole time? You spineless coward. You two-faced son of a bi- Anyway, the war with the Northern Empire is not going well, but who cares? I have a safe house far from any Northern Empire territory. We never had a whole lot of goods. Near the end, mostly just food to feed the troops. Our economy was driven by breweries. After making the spice vendor governor, my party is just myself, two fighters, and a scout. But let's not forget all those who gave their lives for this cause. 
All these starred characters were in my clan at some point. So many companions. My own relatives. Let's pour one out and never forget them. And then, there's Avagos. We never got along very well. He called himself a surgeon, but he was never good at it. But in his own way, he's the real survivor of this story. He went from rags to riches, to rags, to riches, to rags to riches. And now he's living his own life with my gear on the other side of Calradia. After all our differences, I wish him well. So that's it for the party of heroes in Mountain Blade 2, Bannerlord. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is my first narrated pre-recorded piece. Honestly, I don't know if I'll have the patience to make another one of these. But hey, give it a like if you wish, comment if you want, and subscribe if you want to follow more of my content. And to everyone, thanks for watching.